Now that we've looked at both the translation and scale constraint, the rotation constraint should be pretty easy to use. The first thing that we'll do is select the blue square and add a new constraint. This time we'll be selecting the rotation constraint. The options for the rotation constraint are almost the same as the others. We have the target option, which allows us to select our target. And in this case, we're gonna select the red square. With the square selected, we can now rotate the square and you'll see that the blue square rotates along with it. Let's explore some of the other options. Like other constraints, we similarly have the strength property. Don't forget, we can animate this property. Just like the others, we have the different source spaces that our calculations are made from. We also have the offset toggle and we have the copy, min and max degree values. Just like we saw with the scale constraint, if we duplicate the constrained object and move it, then you'll see that when we rotate the red square, both objects still retain their constraint. Now let's adjust the strength of this bottom square just so we can see the difference and we'll drop it down to 50. And when I go back up to the red square, you'll see that one of those squares is rotating more than the other. Thanks to the rotation constraint, I can now animate the red square and it'll be applied to the blue square. For example, let's just rotate the red square just a little bit here at the beginning of the timeline and we'll copy and paste that key to the end and then create a rotation in the opposite direction here in the middle of the timeline. Then we can apply a little bit of cubic easing to all of our keys. And when we play it, you'll see that we're getting two animated objects for the price of one. 